to our good news program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. Are you looking for the rapture? If not, you're going to be looking for the Antichrist. So this is why you must know that you are a child of God on the assurance of this divine book. This is divine assurance. This is divine security. This is the Christ is the living word. This is the only way to heaven. And we're going to see how the world is being deceived by the mystery of iniquity. But it already was working when Christ was on the earth. John wrote in 1 John 2, verse 18, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest and that they were not all of us. You see today, the church is afield with unbelievers. A church can't save you, an organization can't save you. There is nothing can save but Jesus Christ and his blood. We are washed from our sins in his own blood. And then we see verse 20, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. The Holy Spirit teaches you all things. That's why we worship in spirit and in truth. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that there is no lie is of the truth. Only truth is spoken in heaven. That's why we're going to see the lies today and the deception in the world. That Satan, it's all from him. And then verse 22, now here's what God's Word says. And this is the only true authority in the whole world. This is a living book. And it's, verse 22 said, Who is a liar? He calls you a liar. But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist. You see, you're antichrist. That's why we're seeing all the evil and the murderers and the lies in the world, is because the antichrist is living in the bodies of unbelievers, the evil spirits. And if you can't see this, then you're not a child of God, because I, I'm going to read to you what God's Word says. He is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. So here we see in this book, this is what God's Word says. And we must also, as we are finishing with the lesson on the rapture, here's what you are to be doing. You're not looking for the Antichrist. You know he's already, the evil spirits are already here. We're not looking for him to come. That would not be a hope. That, the Antichrist, that wouldn't be a hope. That wouldn't be joy. But we're going to be taken out before he is revealed. And we're going to find that out in 2 Thessalonians. But let's get back to the rapture and what happens. God's Word says in Titus, we'll begin with verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So he's already died for you. But you must accept him as a gift. This, there's no other way to get to heaven. And then verse 12. Now this is what we are to be doing. Now this is our salvation. Through the blood of Christ we're washed from our sins in his own blood. And then verse 12 says, teaching us that denying ungodly lust and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present 
world. Now here's what we're to be doing. Verse 13, Titus 2, 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now listen to what verse 14 says. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, all sin, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And then he says in verse 1 of chapter 3, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey masterage, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be bro no broilers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. This is what we're to be doing as a true believer today. Are you desiring that Christ will live through you? This is our desire that Christ will live through us. May that be your prayer today and to love one another as he has loved us. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before Thee today with such grateful hearts and such excitement over the hope that we have of the rapture coming to take us out of this evil world and all of the corruption that is around us. We pray for these precious children that don't know the Word of God, that's never been taught. We're asking that we will have the spiritual discernment to be guided and directed by the Spirit of God, that we may know the perfect will of God every minute of every day, every true believer that's listening, how we can reach those, that they may be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee, and they may have this blessed hope. Purify our hearts today and let thy life be lived through us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we're looking for the blessed hope. Now Christ showed us before while he was on earth. You see, you have no doubts. You can know everything that's going to happen to you through this book. And if you have doubts, you're not believing what God says. And if you doubt, you shall not receive any good thing. So First of all, when Christ was on the earth, and we can find this in Matthew chapter 17. I know many of you have read this and have studied it, and God's Word is so wonderful and so exciting, and He tells us that He was went up to the mountain apart to pray. And He was transfigured before their eyes, and His face did shine as a sun, and His raiment as white as light. And there appeared with him Moses and Elijah. And when Peter and James and John, we are going to know one another in heaven. There is, this is true. There is no memory in heaven, but we're going to know one another. Moses had died. God buried Moses. Elijah had been taken to heaven without dying in a chariot of fire. Now that was the angelic host. We have divine protection from the angels. The angels watch over every true believer. Hebrews 1.14 Are they not all ministering spirits, ministering to everyone that shall be heirs of salvation? So here we have Peter, James, and John, and they see these people. Moses had been dead and died and God buried him. Now he is raised. You see, this is a picture of those that have died and buried and coming out of their graves. You see, God's word is the most exciting thing. You see, when we hear the trumpet, those that have died are going to be like Moses. They are going to be raised. 
they are going to hear the trumpet and God is going to bring them out of the graves and they are going to receive a body of light. This was brighter than the noonday sun. This is a picture of what those of us that have glorified bodies during the thousand year reign with Christ depicts the kingdom age of those with glorified bodies and those with the natural bodies, how we are going to live. And then Elijah went to heaven without dying. That is a picture of those of us that are going to be raptured and not have to face death. This is what this is a picture of. Also, Enoch was a pic this was a Enoch was a picture of us being taken out before the judgment of the Antichrist. This is what he is showing us in these truths. And then we see also that Peter said, let us make a tabernacle for Moses and one for Elijah and one for Christ. But you see, we are not to worship the dead. Then there stood Jesus and Christ is the one that we are to worship. God's word said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. We're not to worship another person. We're not to set up idols. That's why God buried Moses and no one knew where he was buried because they would have made an idol of him and worship this. You are not to worship the dead. You are to only worship Christ. So if we have this hope that is within us, here's what we are to do as true believers. And now we must turn to this first John. We must read what this says. In first John, he tells us what we are going to be like. God has everything in this book that we need to know. First John chapter three, verse one. Behold, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. You have to be a child of God through the Holy Spirit. And he says, therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So every man that hath this hope purifieth himself even as he is pure. Are you living a holy life? Are you pleasing to the Lord? Well, let's find out why you are not understanding these truths. I have people say to me that it's completely over their head. I have others that love the word and they want to follow along with us. Now we come to chapter Job 38. And here's why you cannot understand these truths because first of all, you haven't been born again, but God's word tells us that he withholds the light from the wicked. Verse 15 of Job, he said, and from the wicked, their light is withholden. You can never know this book until you're born again. And I can tell you today why. This is deception. You see, first of all, Matthew 24, 4, the first thing that Jesus spoke to the disciples, they asked him, when will these things come to pass? And he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Truth is not based on knowledge. Truth is based on a person and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ that said, I 
am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's many organizations today. There are many gods today. But there's only one true and living God. He is the truth. By the time we get through these, we won't get through them this week. We'll get through them next week. You are going to see yourself the way the light of the word of God reveals the truth and the lie. And then Jesus identified the lie himself in John 8, 44. Now you must be born again or these, these truths cannot penetrate your heart. John 8, 44. Here's what he says and this is what we're seeing today. We cannot ever know the truth apart from the Holy Spirit. He said to the disciples, those religious leaders, you see, you can have religion and be lost. You can belong to a church and be lost. You must be born again, or it doesn't matter. You are still a child of the devil if you're not born again by the Spirit of God. John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Why are we seeing children today being murderers? They do not know Christ. Every person, and God's word plainly teaches us this. Also, we go back to 1 John once again. John has these things for us, and he it's so wonderful when you can turn to the book and know that this is the only way to find the truth and to find the way to heaven. 1 John teaches us that whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. This is the spirit of Antichrist today all over the world because they don't know Christ. He is the way to heaven. There's no other way. And we must reach these children. How can we reach them? What can we do? Our hearts ache when we see a child a murderer brings tears to our eyes. And all we can say, what more can we do? You see, we as believers are responsible for those that are lost. We are too busy laying up treasures on the earth and we care nothing about those that are lost. You must pray for this program you must pray for us as we get out the word and that we will train others and teach others to do the same thing. So we see that this is the prince of darkness. Since it is a biblical fact that man is ruled by and willingly follows the prince of darkness, it is quite natural that man is incapable of distinguishing truth from lies. And we see this in Ephesians chapter 2. We see this in God's Word. Ephesians chapter 2 teaches us about the prince of darkness. He's the God of this world. Ephesians 2, And ye hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, and the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. And we see also in John chapter 3, 
Yes, as we give this out and you are have any doubt that you are a child of God, you must call upon him to save you today. It says in John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on you. It's so simple to say, Lord, save me. I believe that you died for me and that I have forgiveness of sin and eternal life. This is the only way for any person in the world to go to heaven. And then we see darkness and lies go hand in hand, just as truth and light are synonymous. Why would Jesus warn his disciples about deception? Because deception appears as though it is the truth. It looks real, but is false and sounds right, but is wrong. It is received as truth, but in reality, it is a lie. That's what we're seeing today with all the false religions and all the gods of this world. And he says in his word that you have turned to God from idols to serve the true God. This is what he wants for every person in the world. You must know this book. And then it is a received as truth through people that don't know the word of God. It is received as truth. And this is why the Bible teaches that peace and prosperity will cover the earth as never seen before, but will be built upon a lie. You see, that's what everybody's concerned about. When all of the things happened at the World Trade Center, they, the most concern was prosperity and the wealth, the wealth of the stock market. That was the main concern. And everybody wants peace. But see, it is false peace today as we're seeing the nations. Why did God allow this to happen? I won't get to this this week, but he allowed it to happen so that the nations of the world are coming together as the one world government and the one world religion. It all had to happen because it's all coming together. All the nations of the world, everybody is wanting peace, not war. But there's only one peace in the world, and that is Isaiah 9, 6, that Christ is the Prince of Peace. There is nothing. You see, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Everybody wants peace, but it can only come through Christ. All the nations of the world, NATO, the United States, the United Nations, all of those governments can never bring true peace. That's all you hear is peace. So we need Christ. Then, lie is based on the foundation of success. You see, everybody measures you by what you have rather than the light they see in you as Christ is our light. That's why we're praying that his life will live through us. And this is, he deceived them in Revelation 13, 11 through 18, and deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had. This is the Antichrist which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So this is widespread deception, business deception. The Antichrist gives rise to the final rebellion against God and one marked by deceit. Daniel 8, 23. 
understanding dark sentences. 825, he shall cause craft to prosper, and by peace shall destroy many. That's how he's going to come in, as a peacemaker. That's why all the nations of the world are being prepared. We have very little time to accept Christ as Savior. We can see the fulfillment of prophecy, and we're not making any dates. There is nobody knows when Christ is coming, but we're to be ready. And I see very few Christians today that are looking for the rapture and the hope of his coming. We must turn to Christ. And Daniel 11:21, he shall come in peaceably. 11:23, he shall work deceitfully. He shall enter peaceably once again, and he shall spread lies. The mystery of iniquity doth already work in 2 Thessalonians. That's another reason the rapture has to take place because God's word says in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You see, he cannot be revealed until the rapture takes place. Are you ready to meet Christ today? Well, I can tell you, by his own blood, he entered in once and to the holy place. By his own blood, he is the one that died that we could be saved through the precious blood of Christ. You must call upon otherwise, economically, politically, and materially, militarily, we are seeing this deception.